Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Jack Breen here. This is Hybrid Plays, and today we are playing Long Live the Axe. Long Live the Axe is a 2D platformer that has you playing as a blue-haired, red-jacketed character who roams around a pixelated world in search of... stained glass church symbols? Grab on, guys, because it gets weird fast. In terms of being a 2D platformer, this game has all the essentials, and a bit more, too. You can jump, double jump, twirl jump, roll, hit people, throw things, and ride fishing hooks up through an underground ocean onto a dock with gigantic fishermen who say things like, Welcome back, Captain. Um... So, there's that. So just what in the gosh darn frick is going on here? In this game, you basically go around exploring this fever dream, fighting enemies and hitting skeletons with fish that are still alive, and fighting bosses that consist of a bat, a tombstone with a gold tooth, and some dude named Iron Mind. Like, essentially, what the fuck. So, I guess it's a Metroidvania? Here's some gameplay! Welcome to Melontown, you must be Fever Man. You are not welcome in Melontown. Okay, Jack, we get it. This game is strange. And that's actually the topic of this video. Long Live the Axe's greatest weapon is its weirdness. It not only sets it apart, which is always good, but it makes for an experience that I felt like I hadn't already been on. Enter the Gungeon reminds me of Nuclear Throne. Darksiders reminds me of Zelda. Rayman reminds me of Mario. This game does not remind me of anything, besides maybe an acid trip, so it stands out for sure. When was the last time you played a game where you went in someone's mouth to find yourself in a metal room with bats that attacked you after you found a sword? This world is weird, but that leads me to a major lesson in this video. Weird doesn't mean good. Weird can be good, but it doesn't mean good. Let's say you make a game about... Anteaters with jetpacks. That's weird, but the game still has to be good. It doesn't mean that you can just code whatever you want. You still have to make a good game around that idea. Long Live the Axe is a fundamentally good game. Even if you strip away the weird themes, dialogue, and environments, it still has a fun and juicy combat system. So make something fun, and then make it weird. Do I need to repeat myself? Make something fun, and then make it weird. Long Live the Axe is fun because, underneath feeling new and strange, it has a strong and stylish fighting system that carries the game forward, up, down, and wherever the hell else it goes. Being weird and standing out is always a good idea, but make sure the gameplay itself is solid first. Alright you guys, well that just about does it for this episode. I hope you learned something today, it was certainly a strange journey, but hey, we made it through it. If you want to play Long Live the Axe, there's going to be a link to the game down below in the description, and if you want to follow the game's creator, his name is Ouch, and there is also a link to his Twitter down below. So once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Even if you strip away the weird dialogue, environments, fuck, weird themes, dialogue, and environments. Long live the a Long live the Axe is a fundamentally good game. Even if you strip away the weird themes, dialogue, and environments, it still has fun and juicy combat. Even if you strip away the weird dialogue, environments, fuck. Weird themes! 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 If you want to follow the creator of Long Live the Axe, his name is Ouch, and there's going to be a link to his Twitter in the... St st